Hello there. Back again for another wonderful what? episode. What? Excuse me. Who is this? What's going on? Guys, I was literally gone for one week. And it's nice to meet you. I don't care. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your favorite host, Ali Melendez. And I'm Isabel Weissman. And this is the, the Only Out to Movie Show. From the IRC studios in Oneonta, New York. Welcome, well, welcome back to another episode of the Oneonta Movie Show that I totally won't get confusing with two hosts. Let's meet our panel, shall we? Whatever. First up, his favorite movie is the one where that guy fights those snakes on a plane. It's Chris Turnbull. Hello, guys. Welcome back to the Oneonta Movie Show. Uh, Matt thinks that Logan will do better than beating the beast of the box office. That is an alternate fact, and we'll absolutely be crushing him on it later in the show. And to his right, we have the guy who has no shame in his love for the, di for the Divergent series. Don't lie now. It's Mike Pappas. Uh, I mean, really, you got me there. I can't really lie about that. But in that case, enjoy some Jim Bean. And I hope you stick around for this debate. It's going to be awesome. Next on the panel is a man who can't decide if he wants sushi or lamb's blood this evening. Matt Berkland, everyone. Yeah, so the problem with the sushi, I, I get, I'm very allergic to shellfish, and it's, it's very annoying to try to eat it all, and, but I feel like we're going to have a good show today, and I'm going to show these guys what, what the great movie is. We're going to hit them with the hind, and I'm going to tell these guys off, because I'm sick and tired of this trip. And rounding out our esteemed panel of misfits, we have the impeccably mediocre Tom Capone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mediocre after that? <laughs> After that impression, I'm mediocre? You, I Please. guess. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, oh, looking sad today. All right, so since we have had quite a few weeks in between shows, and last week you guys talked about old white people awards. Right. So this week, let's catch up on those movies we missed. Gents, left this, gents let's discuss the movies you saw over the last two months. Chris, why don't you kick it off? All right, well, um, I happened to see Lego Batman this weekend. I noticed that you saw it as well. Yep. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, yeah, I thought it was uh, um, probably just because I'm older, I didn't enjoy it as much, but I thought it was a cute, like kind of a cute movie. It was g good acting, good like references to the comics. I, I, I don't know. It's just. I mean, cute. I personally, in my opinion, it is probably the best DC movie since The Dark Knight, which is <laughs> sad. Incredibly really? sad. Wow. Yeah. Um, they take a lot of shots at Suicide Squad and Batman v Superman really? in that movie. Very like a ton. I'm so. surpri I was surprised. Um, yeah. But the yeah, opening sequence was so much better. Like yes, uh, I mean yeah. this. It isn't as good as a Lego Movie. I'll tell you that right off yeah. the bat. But it is really, really good. Um, the animation is gorgeous. It still has that great semi stop motion animation that yeah. they use. Um, all the great bad guys even come up. A bunch of, of really obscure <laughs> Batman characters show up, like yeah. Batman and Polka Dot Man. It's yeah. great. Um, Those are actually real characters. Yes, they are, and yeah. I, I was surprised yeah. they actually got them in there. Yeah. Condiment Man. Yeah, in condiment this movie? Man. I, I I'm seeing this movie. It's now. Condiment, yeah, yeah, condiment yeah, Man. Yeah, condiment Man. sold. He, he shows up for a bit, but yeah, yeah. it's great. Um, and do you guys remember the what's the actor's name who played um, Harvey Dent in the original Batman movie? Billy Williams. Williams. He is actually in this as Two Face. And You're great. kidding? Yep, he's in Lego Batman as Two Face. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, fun fun fact: he also played Lando Calrissian in the original Star Wars trilogy. Yep. Um. Uh, overall, a really great movie. Um, tons of great Batman jokes. Great, even great character for Batman because yeah. he has the he has the problem where he doesn't want to start a family again because his family, his parents died. So, and I thought it was very good to take him out of the dark places that we put him in. Because every time we make a Batman movie, it's so dark and depressing. This is a movie about hey, Batman. He can be nice. He can be have friends and have a family and that stuff. And, it's, and he can really it's be nice too. Yeah. So, overall, I'd really recommend it. Um, so, what well, did you guys see? Well, well, speaking of those dark places, someone who's been in the dark place for a very long time is um, M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, yeah. Just came out with Split. Yeah. Oh, and I'm going to say was something brilliant. I, always wanted to see I it. never thought I'd say. M. Night Shyamalan's back, people. Yeah. Yep. M. Night's back. That's... Yeah. I, I feel like he had to take he had to be hit down a few pegs oh, yeah. to be risen back up from he the ashes. He was hit down exactly. about fifty pegs yeah. after the happening. Yeah. Last day I been there. I will never forgive him for after that. After Earth, <laughs> the village. Okay. Lady mm -hmm. in the water. It's been quite a That's long time. That's quite a resume. Quite a resume for him. But this movie, he <coughs> yeah. 
James McAvoy delivers this perhaps the best performance oh, yeah. I've ever seen him give. The way he switches between all these different characters he's playing. It really shows you how great of an actor he is. Like, he can do that on, like, sort of throughout the movie, on command almost. Yeah, but this, the ending of this movie, it's now it's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. I'm not going to tell you what happened, obviously, but Where the ending of the movie is great. <laughs> the end of the movie is absolutely great. It, it has a yeah. legitimately good twist, unlike his, yeah. other, unlike his past few movies. Right. It does. It, it makes the movie better, I feel like. Yeah. I, I watched the movie the first time and went, okay, this is really good. I had some minor issues throughout. Then the end didn't happen, and it fixed a lot of the issues, yeah. the issues that I had. I didn't think no. there and were too one many of, uh, issues. One of, the, one of the issues it didn't fix was that I didn't feel like M. Night really balanced all the plots he had going on in this movie yeah. very well. I felt like sometimes he'd cut between stuff that was happening. I felt like, oh, he's not really, he's not really balancing. Like, there's a subplot with James McAvoy's therapist that just kind of feels like thrown in there throughout, throughout, throughout most of it. Now, now, you said James McAvoy gives a very good performance in the movie, and I'm surprised because, yeah. as shown by some past Shyamalan movies like The Last Airbender, where everyone sounded the same and it sounded like George Lucas yeah. directing the prequels, and I'm just very surprised he was able to evolve and get well, really he, good yeah. performances out well, of his because actors. Because with, with Split, what I'm like done here, he's gone back to his roots. Right. He's gone back to that smaller thriller that made yeah. him the director he was. And that he, he, he went away from the big budget Last Airbenders, yeah. After Earths, that where his complete just went completely to nowhere. Right. And obviously he, he excels at, at, that, at that type of genre too. Yeah. So Mike, what movie did you see? Okay, so Friday I finally got a chance to see Hacksaw Ridge, one of the movies that are nominated in the Academy Award this year. Um, you know, I've wanted to see it for a while because I've heard, I've heard great things about it. You know, I didn't expect it to get too much of the, that kind of nominations because of who was, who was directing it also. Yeah. Right. But I gotta say, you know, as much as people want to like really hate on Mel Gibson like for the, for the person that he is, like, like of how he is as a director, he's, he's amazing. He's an incredible yeah. director. Yeah, you he's might amazing. not like what yeah. he says, but he can make a movie. Yeah. I mean, a um, a um, Apocalypto. Yeah, that was great. Right. great. I mean, argu that was arguably his last big movie that he yeah. made. Oh yeah, it was because and that was because that for, was ten years because ago. Because for obvious reasons. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, ha and if we had uh, 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 if we were an uncensored show, we'd be able to show some of those reasons and laugh about them. Yeah, yeah. but no. But I thought Andrew Garfield delivered a great performance. I thought he was great in it. You know, it it really because. You know, I I always wasn't much of a big fan of Andrew Garfield, but like this kind of like yeah. helped me like become more of a fan of him because he it showed like he could really he could really like pull up a, a performance like that. I I don't think honestly he'll get the best actor Oscar. I feel like it'll be either Affleck or Gosling. Yeah. But but that Nadal doesn't take away from the incredible performance. Oh no 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 no! no, no. Right. I'm not saying he did like a horrible job or he's not worthy of it. I'm sure he's worthy of a nomination from that performance definitely. But and I'm sure like down the road during his career he will get another nomination and possibly a win. Yep. You know, it, he kind of convinced me of that. I didn't really think of it at first, but after seeing that movie, I I was convinced that and he could. Were, do it. were you surprised by the religious elements in the film? I wasn't no. that much surprised because it, in the trailer it kind of set the tone for that. So I knew going in <laughs> what I was getting myself into if it was like going to be that religious or not. But I, I didn't mind it. Yeah, yeah but I didn't I, mind it. It was he, part here, of the story. Here's the thing: like this is a this has religious elements in it, but it's a good movie. The problem is. But most religious movies are really, really but terrible. Yeah. Well, so this didn't have yeah. religious and take those religious elements and shove them down your throat. And yeah, no, that's this is our message. This is our message. This is our message. Like yeah. other like war arm, war arm room did. It just shoved the message down, down on your throat. Yeah, and that's uh. and that's what worked about it. They didn't put so much emphasis on it, or just like made the, made the audience like tired out from that message. It just like had a nice flow of it. Mm. So I. I enjoyed it. I I'd, I'd say like eight grenades out of ten in my book. Wow, eight grenades uh, out of ten. Yeah, and I think for Lego Batman, I'm probably gonna give I'm probably gonna give eight emo dark songs out of ten. You with like that style? I'd give it seven out of ten. And now I I absolutely loved Split, so I'm gonna have to give it eight and a half personalities out of um, ten. <laughs> and I'd give uh, Split nine out of ten since I saw <coughs> Split too. So. All right. All right. Let's see what's next. You know, Allie? Ugh, what? I think this is the start of a beautiful friendship. And you don't want to miss just how it continues to flourish just after this commercial break. Hey, guys. This is Becca Smith, and you're watching Wire TV.
and we are back. Last week, after the show, we heard an interesting prediction from our eccentric host, Matt, that Logan is going to make more money than Beauty and the Beast. So this week, we're all going to sit back and listen to how and why on God's green earth that is even remotely possible. Mm. Matt, why don't you state your reasons and we'll go around the panel and see who agrees and who may disagree. Okay. First of all, just because I have a different opinion does not make me eccentric. Secondly, Logan, I believe, will be the big movie of this coming March instead of Beauty and the Beast. And here are the reasons I think it's, I think why. It's going to be released early in the, um, earlier in the uh, uh, month and during like our spring break, so I bet a bunch of us will probably go see it. It's a rated R X-Men movie, and I'm beginning to think a lot of people on this, uh, on the, in the community, of, uh, well, our, uh, our people, or well, our staff, are, think, are underestimating the comic book community. And it's a pretty big community. And third, this is Hugh Jackman's final Wolverine movie. So that alone should be getting uh, a lot of heads up. And it's been proven that movies <coughs> like Deadpool can break in a lot of movie or money from being R-rated superhero movies, even without the younger audience. So. And I think you are truly underestimating the power of adults that want to give something their children to watch on the big screen. They could watch you, the animated movie and you for do, free. Who's gonna? And you do realize we always go back to our childhood childhood roots with like with Disney movies. You yes, know? but like they, they could watch the same thing on a VHS for like three bucks. Or I guess by let's compare last year because last year was a similar right. situation. The you had Jungle Book and you had Deadpool. You right, know, Deadpool did was the number one rated R movie of all time. That it yes, earned that title. Yes, rated, rated R still hindered it. But it, it, had it made more money. Deadpool. I I know that for a fact. It made more money. Beauty and the Beast is the arguably one of the biggest right. franchises that Disney Franchi had. franchises. Is talking about. It's, it's one movie. It's, not, it's multiple movies, but technically franchise. Right. Um, either way. I think it'll do better just because not only is it a Disney movie, it's been heavily marketed, yeah. it's PG, so it opens up the audience even more, broader range. It is the big family movie come out. But as of right now, the only family movie out is Lego is on Lego and Batman. Right. Between now and then, there's not really a whole lot of family movies released in. Okay. With Yahweh and Logan, I forget when Ghost in the Shell comes out, but that's not going to be a family movie. So? Kong's not going to be a family movie. This is going to be a movie people go to with their families. Groups right. of four or five, even more, go into this movie. Beauty and the Beast is a 90% chance to crack a um, billion dollars. And, oh, mind, right. and mind you, too, the family market, like, the whole family market and children uh, market, too, is, well, what much about more, is much more valuable than the adult market. Okay. Plus, okay, what about the critical reception? How do you think they'll do generally? Because I believe, even though that Beauty and the Beast has a better cast and the, like, all that, we've seen movies like Suicide Squad or like Batman and Superman have the same like, build up and all that. I, I'm just saying, I was right about Suicide Squad last semester being... Well, here's the difference between uh, Logan and Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast's story has already been established. Right. So is, Logan, so, is Wolverine. so is Wolverine. Well, no, because you're transferring it from a comic, but you literally right. have another Beauty and the Beast movie that came out. And as long as they stick right. to that script, it's yes. basically going to be the same quality of storytelling. Right. Well, plus when you have such talent as um, Emma um, Watson. Okay, but one. you can't apply similar... Aspects from the Logan, animated to Logan's the Logan's being adapted from a comic book very loosely a, um, right. a adapted. So it's pretty much so it's, it's basically it's being written by scratch by the it's director. Pretty much and Logan old is the idea they right, I know. from old man Logan. I know my comic book history. Don't think you know comics. Well, I, know, than I guess we're getting the point is the 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 um, the I guess type of um, the topic of Logan being old. That's really all that's being taken for the most part. Right, and the fact that. Well, it's uh, also introducing different aspects. Like, you're looking at, you, like, this isn't just Wolverine. This is, like, him, and he's, if he, anyone knows the story, it's like Wolverine has, is done with fighting. He's not the same guy. This is a different Wolverine. He's traveling with Patrick Stewart, and he's got, like, <coughs> a young girl with him. So that, like, it's an entirely different. All right, well, we'll just have to see when they come yeah. out, because we can be arguing here all okay, day about yeah. it. So we will see. These are big movies, and I'm sure they'll both do excellently in yeah. the box office. Well, right. we'll do better. What's next? Well, there you have it. Our box office predictions that are 100% accurate and not based on any bias whatsoever. <laughs> Stick around because I and I alone will be judging tonight's debate. But Don't um, worry. 
<laughs> you can judge next week, sweetie. We're still best friends though, right? We'll be back after this commercial break. When I attended SUNY Oneonta, I decided to enroll in the business economics major. Why? Because it's such a broad field with so many options. There's not only economics, there's management, marketing, finance, and accounting. When I was in high school, um, I took an accounting class and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the economics classes that I had taken. I had taken economics in high school and I didn't really like it that much. But as soon as I came here, I learned it in a different way and the way the professors presented the material was a lot different and they applied it to real life situations that actually affected us as students and they gave us real world scenarios for all the problems, so I really enjoyed that. It's so important that you get involved here on campus, especially in the School of Economics and Business. We have the Business Economics Club, the Accounting Club, the Marketing Club. When you go to look for a job in the future, an internship, and they see that you're involved on campus and that nature is, is very impressive. The other opportunities that SUNY Oneonta has to offer is this great program called Backpacks to Briefcases. We go to New York City, we meet with Oneonta alumni, and we learn about their experience that they had at Oneonta and the careers that they took on post-graduation at Oneonta. And I've obtained two summer internships through that and my sophomore and junior year, and it was an amazing experience. They have a stock ticker room and classes with computer labs, so I mean the technology is definitely improving and the facilities keep getting better and better. It makes you look so much better on paper as well for your resume and then also you're constantly being able to build yourself as a person. I think that the classes can be difficult at times but I think if you go to their office hours and you stay ahead of the work and just don't fall behind, I think it's a really manageable program. Meet new people and build new relationships. I feel like that's the most important thing that I learned as a college student and becoming a professional once I graduate in a couple of months, so good luck. <laughs> I'm back, punks. Y'all better be on your A-game or I'm cracking skulls, you hear? I'm sorry, I don't know. It just came over me there. Probably the pure adrenaline of seeing John Wick Chapter 2 this past weekend. Am I right, boys? All right, who's the queen of segues? So in honor of that, we will be debating which movie would be better if the main character were replaced with John Wick. Chris, are you ready? Yep. 15 seconds, go ahead. All right, mine is for Star Wars Attack of the Clones, and I want John Wick to replace Anakin Skywalker. It might seem like a really weird choice, but I think as a character, it works because what's unique about um, Anakin and their relation and uh, Obi-Wan's relationship is that Anakin was always the morally obscure I am all. Sorry. Mike, you ready? Yep. Go for it. What's better than Liam Neeson telling the telling guy on the phone, I will find you and I will kill you? <laughs> Not much. And that's John Wick saying it. I mean, there's tons of possibilities where, there, where this could go if John Wick tries to rescue his daughter. You know what I'm talking about? Tons of possibilities. I know what you're talking about. Matt, yeah. let me see what you're talking about. Okay. Um... First of all, I haven't seen Chapter 2 yet, but uh, I do remember the original John Wick, and I believe that he would be perfect to replace Bella Swan as the main character in Twilight. For some reason, I just think about turning Twilight into a vampire werewolf hunting movie with John Wick would just be completely bad A. All right, all right, all right. Tom, you ready? Yep. Go ahead. So John Wick has taken down gangsters upon gangsters time and time again, but it's time he faces his best challenge yet when he takes over the role of Eddie Murphy in Daddy Daycare. He has to watch, watch these kids better than he could take out gangsters. Oh, it's going to be a tough one. All right, so everyone has spoken. Whoever would like to comment on someone else's argument, you may begin now. How are you supposed to take John Wick seriously watching kids as a babysitter? Come on now. Kindergarten cop. Exactly. Uh -huh. You realize you just described the movie The Pacifier, right? Starring The Rock, it's the exact yeah. same movie. And, but That's now we're going to make it better because it, is, because it is John Wick. John Wick taking on these kids with his stone cold attitude. He's used to bullets, he's used to grenades, he's used to people shooting at him. What's he going to do when a kid pees his pants? He's going to go he's and gonna shut gonna, up he's like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's going to cry. Uh, panic and cry? This guy yeah, can take down a whole gang. Challenge. Yeah, a gang is not a baby. Yeah. And kids who are going to pee themselves and are going to fight each other. What's he going to do then? And Mike, he'll way, start, to, he'll way, start to, a kids way to be creative. Put yeah, Mike just, uh, yeah, yeah, putting him in the that. same movie that Liam Neeson did ten times better. That's Mike, so original. Mike, way to put him in Taken because, you know, that's just 
so original, you so know. That's not it. John Wick or anything. Yeah. That's not him putting him in pretty much John Wick Chapter 3. That's yeah. what way suits to get him, creative. though. That's what suits him, and that's his, that's his strong suit. He's taking on bad guys. And who, and who doesn't want to see him take, like, get his daughter but back? But we see him do that. We, we yeah. need to take the character of John Wick to new places. You see, he can do it so we great great much. He can deliver that line better bring, than Liam Neeson We need to bring John Wick back. Anybody, if anybody could do... do better than Liam Neeson, it's, it's Keanu Reeves. Let me Reeves. hear your impression. I, I will find you, and I will kill you. You left out a... Whoa, whoa you're so original. Whoa. Man. Yeah. And Star Wars, not even John Wick can make that movie possible exactly. because the movie relies on, on right. the romance between you need Padme. Anakin. You need Anakin, Anakin Skywalker in the movie. The, There's no way no, you, you can do it. No, the movie it. relies on the romance between, a, between Anakin and Padme, yeah. and not even Keanu Reeves as John Wick right. can make that romance watchable. But I the, the point the, the problem with, with the Star Wars Fett, is that the dialogue is bad, but John Wick has so much minimal dialogue that it isn't necessary, to be honest. But no. you put him in the same movie, but so he's going to have all all of that on that on dialogue. Right. With no, by, by, that, by that argument, you're putting him in daddy daycare, and the dialogue of the yeah. movie is awful, so don't even go there with that argument. You could do the same thing with putting Arnold like Schwarzenegger or Vin Diesel, clones. like we mentioned. I, I'm, I'd say it's better dialogue than Attack of the Clones. Well, I mean, the problem with America's, uh, Anakin Skywalker is they have to have menacing, and Hayden Christensen isn't very menacing. That's why I gotta have someone like John Wick. Well, no, because An An Anakin's not written to be menacing. Yeah. Yes, he is. He's supposed to be Darth Vader. Not that much in Attack of the Clones. There's only one But he has to evolve into that. Exactly, and that's disappointing. That's why I want someone. Like John Wick in there. Yeah, I mean, you know what? You know what? Like I don't see me. John Wick as Django Fett. You know what? Twilight? Yeah. You have to change in the movie completely. Exactly. Right? That's the point. You're changing it completely. So? so, what you're saying is maybe John Wick should just be in Twilight. All right, Chris, you got 20 seconds to make a closing statement. Go. All right. The reason I want John Wick to be as Anakin Skywalker is because Anakin Skywalker is supposed to be this brutal person, this person who becomes corrupted, who basically becomes Darth Vader, the ultimate badass of the universe. And frankly, I want someone like John Wick in that role because Hayden Christensen could not pull it off. Okay. Mike, go ahead. If John Wick could protect his cat, he could, he could, he could somehow find a way to save his daughter. I mean, what else more can I tell from that? Cat's daughter is really the same amount of importance. Um, all right, Matt, go ahead. All right, I just want to see, for some reason, it gives me great satisfaction seeing Taylor Lautner and Robert Pattinson being, having their butts whooped by Keanu Reeves in a, ki kill, um, in a vampire uh, werewolf attack movie. So that's, my, that's why I think it would be a good movie. Okay, Thanks. Tom, go ahead. We've seen John Wick do the killing people thing over and over again now. We need to take him to new areas and have him face his greatest enemy yet, babies and child. Because the menace parents face from babies and kids compares to nothing John Wick has ever faced. I'd like to see him change a, change a diaper. He'll cry. All right, it's time. So it's time to make my decision. And I think that based on the arguments as well as me wanting to see him change a diaper, the winner is Tom. Congratulations, Tom. That is all the time we have for tonight. Once again, I'm Ali Melendez. Don't forget it. I have no idea who that other girl was. She probably won't be back. I'll make sure of it. I know where she lives. Um, but don't worry. I'll call the police after the credits roll. See you next time.